Hello, my name's Kevin and welcome to part 3 of the tutorial. In this part, we're going to create a slightly more complicated application, but still quite simple. The application is going to be called MTG Life Counter. Now, you might be asking, what the hell is MTG Life Counter? Well, MTG stands for Magic the Gathering, which is a really, really nerdy card game that me and a few friends play. And we need a way to count life, basically, because in the game you have 20 life you can go up life, you can go down life. People attack you, you go down. If you use, I don't know, like freaking healing spells or something, you go up in life. It's quite simple. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple app that will count life as well as having a D20 dice roll on it, as in a ran basically a random number generator that generates numbers between 1 inclusive and 20 inclusive. So we'll create this app completely and debug it, but first I'll actually show you the app to show you what it's going to look like when we're done, just so you know what we're creating, and we'll go from there. Right, I've already got the app installed on my phone, so I'm going to open the app, so I'm going to open my menu, and then I'm going to find it still called Hello Cordova, Cordova for the moment, we'll go over changing it. Now here is the app. So you can see I can tap minus one and the life will go down. I can tap plus one and the life will go up. I can also tap plus five and the life will go up or minus five and the life will go down. Now it also has a dice roller as you can see. I can generate random numbers quite simply. And also if I try and take it below zero, it won't let me. You can see I can try getting below zero but it just won't let me. It gets stuck at zero because you can't have below zero life. So you can see I can try as hard as I want and it will not go down. There's also a reset button which when I'm done playing with the buttons. There's also a reset button, which when clicked will reset the life and dice, uh, the dice roller, which is quite useful too. The first thing I want to show you is the documentation that you can get on the internet because it's surprisingly useful and will really help you if you know it's there. What I want you to do is go to Google and do a search for Ionic uh, Components, like that. First result will be CSS Components Ionic Framework. Click that. So now you can see we're on that page. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is the amount of stuff on here is incredibly useful. So on the left-hand side, you can see header, content, footer, buttons, list, and so on and so forth. These are all UI elements you can import into your project. So the first one is header. Now, we're already using a header in our project. So remember the one at the top? Uh, you can change its color, as you can see. You can also change its color to whatever you want, but they've got some suggest some suggestions for colors here. Uh, we will be using a bar dark. Then you can have a subheader, which could be for another page in your app, for example. Then they've got um, thanks, Carl. Then you've got content. It shows that H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and so on all work as expected, as well as paragraphs and links. Then you can add a footer, which stays at the bottom of the page at all times. It doesn't move. Then it shows you you've got buttons, uh, block buttons, which are bl buttons that uh, fill the width, or yeah, display. It adds a display block property. Uh, full width buttons. Uh, you can change the size and so on and so forth. Now the other one that we're going to be using is button bars. Now we'll also be using cards. Uh, cards are basically like a container for text uh, that look nice, simple as that. Those are the UI elements we're going to be using. So this page is incredibly useful when you're looking for UI elements to actually add to your application. Like for example, there's a menu button, um, so you can have buttons in your header. Uh, what else could there be? You can see they show there's item thumbnails, and these are all things you can pretty much just copy and paste straight into your app. It, it makes your life so much easier. This is why frameworks are great. Anyway, let's get on with the creation of the app. So the first thing we're going to do is find the projects we created before. If you open up your file browser and then go to your user folder again, um, I was going to get there. There we go. And then go into your Hello Android folder and then go to www. Right click on your index file, edit with whatever text editor you're using and you'll be back here. This is where we left it, if you remember. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the name of the app, i.e. what's at the top of the bar, um, you know, at the top of the bar of the app. We're going to change that to MTG Life Counter. Uh, we're going to get rid of the content because we don't need Hello Android anymore. And we're also going to change the color of the bar. And the way we're going to change the color of the bar is we're going to change it. Uh, bar stable, and we're going to add bar dark. 
that came from the documentation I showed you earlier. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a card. Now a card, as I said earlier, is just like a thing that holds text. It's used for lots of different things, but I'm going to use it to hold the life. The life is 20 by default, so we'll create a card, div, as in create a box, give it a class. A class is like, I want this box to do everything that this class does. So, uh, for example, the Ionic Framework has a class called card, and it makes the box look like a card. It is really that simple. So now we'll give it a default life, but before we do that, we're going to create another box, div, just a box without any styling on it whatsoever at the moment. We're going to give it an ID so we can talk to it later on. We'll give it an ID of a life. And in life, we'll put 20 for the time being because the default life is 20. So we always want it to start off at 20. Now we'll close those divs because you always have to close divs. Like that. And now we've closed those divs. The next thing we'll do is we'll style the... Um, We'll style the 20 a bit, so we'll give it a H2, which means make it the second header of the page, which is quite large. If you change that between what H1 and H6, you can experiment with it. And now that we've done that, I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. I recommend always tabbing. The reason being is later on when you get into some massive projects, it really helps. So I've given it a H2 tag, and we'll also center it. Now, people that know HTML will know what I'm doing right now as a a sin, but please, I don't want to mess around with. Um, I don't want to mess around with. Um, let me just type this. I don't want to mess around with uh, CSS just yet because it can, you know, can get complicated. So I'm not going to do CSS just yet. So now that we've done that, if we save that and then go back to our thing and open it with Firefox or Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. You can see this is what we have so far. You can see that the app rescales, so it changes size depending on what it looks like. So we'll just make it look like a phone screen-ish, um, like that for the time being, and we'll continue developing. So we'll come out of those divs, because we've done everything we need to in there, and now what we'll do is we'll create a new div. Uh, we'll give it a class and call it button bar. Now, a button bar in Ionic is basically a bar that you could, that you can put buttons in, and the buttons will arrange themselves. You'll see what it does in a moment. So I'm going to close that, and then in the button bar, I'm going to put uh, two buttons. Uh, a class equals button, as in create a link. A means link. Class equals button means make it look like a button. And then we will we'll close it and make it... Might, we'll put the text as minus one in there for the moment. Basically, that means minus one life. And now, rather than typing all that out again, we'll just copy it and paste it and have a button that does plus one. Now, we'll add the second row, which I showed you earlier, which does the minus and plus five, like that. And then we'll add the third row, which will be the roll the dice button. And for the moment, we'll just put a zero in there because we obviously haven't rolled the dice, so it's going to be a zero. So now if we save that and then run it by pressing F5 to refresh, you can see we're starting to have an app which looks a bit like the one we, we I showed you. Now I'm going to add some gaps. Now to add a gap, you can either do it via CSS, but for the moment, we'll do it with BR forward slash. That means break, i.e. put a line space in between. So if I save that, you can see I've added a line space. Now I'll add another BR here, and you can see now we have three spaces like that, but I'm going to give this one a little bit more space because I want it to be a little bit further down. So that's the basic UI done. So the only thing we have left to add is a reset button. So what we'll do now is we'll add our reset button, like so. We'll do a send, why am I not typing? There we go, center, A class button, reset, close the link, close the center. So now if we save that and then refresh, you can see the button is now centered. It's a bit close for comfort though, so I'm gonna add a couple of those BR things again. Like so. And then we'll look again, and you can see the reset button is now scaled down a bit. 
So that's the UI done. So all we really need to do now is code those buttons to increment or decrement that, i.e. increase or decrease that, and then the roll dice button needs to change that. You can see the buttons are all clickable. So yeah, we'll move on now. So that's the end of this part. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to, co to code the JavaScript that we will be using to actually cause the buttons to do what they do. So, for example, minus 1 will minus 1 from your score, roll dice will generate a random number between 1 and 20, display it, etc, etc. But we'll do that in the next part. Now, if you like this video, I'd really, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up or share it on Facebook or with a friend that you know wants to learn this sort of stuff because I'm really trying to grow my viewership here. So, again, thanks for watching.